Wow. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. We just did three. And we're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Never too much. It. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe did 99, something like that. But um, I did 148 Fear Factors. Wow. And then I did six more. Then we did when when it came back and right. six or seven more. So I think it did. We did seven and forty eight. Yeah, that was preposterous. That was when I was losing my mind. And was it even one a day, or was it less than no. one a day? No, no, one took three days. Wow. Sometimes you could bang out one in two days. Like you could have the B stunt early in the day and the C stunt at night, like the final stunt at night. How yeah, was that's that my process? <sighs> um, you know what again very fortunate it was a great gig plenty of money and it was all good and it definitely helped my stand up because it gave me fuck you money too it gave mm -hmm. me the the ability to not worry about like having money in the bank because i'm not i don't have like extravagant tastes i'm not too ridiculous with money but i i like feeling like i, I don't have to worry like as soon as you don't have sure. to worry about like, okay good don't think about that anymore now think about other things so it, it really helped me there and also the preposterousness of it was a boundless source of material <laughs> yeah it was just such a ridiculous I show loved it. i hosted a spinoff that didn't get picked up what was it called say uncle <laughs> Hurwitz, the, Hurwitz's show too <laughs> was it and I love and i was writing on the man show and that's how i knew david Hurwitz, who was producing fear factor and they had a show called say uncle which i later parroted in the de niro movie i wrote the comedian <laughs> called like stop uncle or whatever it was but anyway the the big one of the big things was a guy a contestant got in a turkey pen mm -hmm. and we like put maple syrup all over him and he rolled around and these like birds like pecked at him and he's his family's there watching and he starts bleeding and Jesus. and i stopped the thing and the producers were mad They're like you can't stop in the middle i'm like the guy's crying i go <laughs> and, and it was just a total disaster you could tell it was going to be a big hit but it was risky and then i remember going to jimmy kimmel's like premiere party for jimmy kimmel live and uh, i saw the head of abc there uh, and I'd never done this in my entire life. They, he was like getting a drink, and I walked over and I said, "Please don't pick it up." <laughs> really? I said, "Yeah, it's it's rough. It's gonna be it's gonna be too hard to stand behind." Really? We're torturing people. Whoa! And they didn't pick it up. And I, he he just kind of looked at me and smiled. What, what year is this? This would have been two thousand three. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. that was right after Fear Factor w was first launched. When when. Those shows, what happens is you get used to one thing, and so you have to do something that's bigger and better the yeah, next year. Yeah. And so when we came back, I felt uncomfortable with a lot of the shit. They know right. how to do it. Like yeah. These stunt guys are top of the food chain, They but they were doing some sketchy shit. Like one of them, we had these people huh. chained to a tree. Yeah. Uh, with uh, bungee cords uh. that were attached to a helicopter, mm. okay, wow. and they had to figure out the right locks to unlock the bungee cord that or the straps that keep them to the tree. And then as soon as they do, they undo the strap and tush, they go fucking shooting out into space into the center <laughs> of this gigantic canyon, <laughs> and they're bouncing underneath this oh, helicopter. Wow. And I remember thinking, like, this doesn't... We, yeah. If we could do this a thousand times, one of them, someone's going to die. Of course. One of them, someone's going to die, and but it might that, be the next one. But it never happened. We got lucky, dude. I really feel like we got lucky. I really, really, honestly, 100% feel like we got lucky. There was a few things. First of all, you, there's a certain amount of risk that you take whenever you're doing anything, like jumping a car yeah. off of a building roof, which we did. We had people fly cars across a train, a moving train. Right. Okay, there's risk involved in that, right? But the one that scared the shit out of me the most was bull riding. We had people ride bulls. It was the only time I told contestants, don't do it. I'm like, if you, if you wanted to ask me, I would say, don't do it. You on can, air? No, 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 no. Before we, mm -hmm. no, on air, I mean, I gave them the, the standard. Right. But when, you know, when I would talk to them, I'd say, look, this is up to you, right? I mean, if you want to go on, I mean, people do know how to ride bulls, but you don't know how to ride a bull. We're not teaching you how to ride a bull. You're not going through classes. You're not yeah. slowly yeah. but surely building up your techniques. Right. You're just going to go ride a bull. Right. Don't do that. Right. Don't do that. That's right. what I would say. Right. And we had this girl. She was like 98 pounds. She got launched off the back of this bull. And she, look at this. These people went fucking flying. Like, wow. look at that. That that thing's kicking. You got to know how to fall, too. Bar yeah. Barely misses them when it's kicking. I mean, they're wearing helmets and shit. But look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, wow. I, hit her. I mean, come on, man. Look at this. I mean, that's that the fall, the way she felt like that, that is like getting hit in the back of the head with the world. Yeah. So, like, my personal feelings about trauma and about what's dangerous and shit like this, this is a no, no, especially for a 
90 pound woman like this poor lady oh my goodness and she got up cute little fella i was back then <laughs> yeah she got up man she was tough as shit but everybody i feel like in that one i feel like we got lucky i feel like we rolled the dice <gasps> because if they stomp you they they lacerate livers and crush oh, yeah yeah crush spleens and they can stomp you the funny thing was those stunt guys are so fucking tough those guys are so used to putting their ass on the line that they don't think anything about someone doing something risky. Right. To them, that's what you do. You show right. up for work. Right. And um, that's definitely a different in your head, like alpha or something. They're to, animals. To have to do that. To be, well, they're, to, they're like fighters. To crave that. You or know? like uh, you gotta wonder what the wrestlers. family's saying. You know, does it keep them from having a family? Does a who's gonna marry you if you're throwing your life in the, on the line, unrelated to? War or famine? <laughs> well, I think there's a certain allure to it. Remember that that TV uh, show, The Fall Guy? Yeah. yeah. How about Evil Knievel? <laughs> yeah, Women loved him. Women loved Evil Knievel. Yes, that's a good point. <laughs> Women love risk takers. They like BMX guys that do those flips and shit. And the, the, those guys get, are cr those, those guys really that shit. And now they have the parkour guys where they like climb up a building with no any any uh, any kind of. That's those what guys you should do, Dave. So you could mind. smoke. You should do parkour. Uh, sit on, on a, on a mm. iron iron grid. Do 